In his last video, Great Scott was not successful building a walkie-talkie project and suggested that we use his schematic to find out the problem. But nevertheless, feel free to pick up my design schematic and PCB of the project in order to maybe even fix an obvious and dumb mistake I made. Because I like his work and I love all sorts of wireless gadgets, I decided to give it a try. Debugging always is an essential skill for a maker, because errors help us to learn. And to make it clear, Great Scott did not make an obvious nor a dumb mistake as he suggested. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Because I often get comments like, my project doesn't work, please help, I decided to do this debugging video. This was also the topic of the video number 184, where I showed seven rules for debugging. Let's start with rule number one and ask the question, did it ever work before? The clear answer here is no. Great Scott built his walkie-talkies from scratch and he was never happy with the sound quality. So it is clear it will not be a repair, it will be an improvement and will take some time. And we are even not sure if we will succeed because this project is much harder than most of his other videos. Otherwise he would have been successful. In video number 184 I concentrated on repairs. This time we will see which rules also apply to improvements. Let's continue with rule number two. Reduce the number of components. For that a block diagram is always helpful. Left to right we have a microphone, a preamplifier which increases the voltage level and an Arduino or in the case of Great Scott only an Atmel chip on his PCB. It creates a digital signal and transmits it via two NRF24L01s to a second Arduino. Here the digital signal is converted into a analog one and the speaker or headphone should play what was heard by the microphone. To reduce components we have to cut this diagram into several parts. I suggest to cut here and here and here. Why? The two Arduinos, including the two NRF24L01s, is a complex system controlled by a code not written by us. So, for a first check, we keep it together. Only if it does not work, we will dig into it. The second cut is to isolate the amplifier from the microphone. Now we have four parts. The microphone, the amplifier, the transmission system, and the loudspeaker or headphone. By the way, many of Great Scott's viewers suggested that the problem is here. He connected a headphone directly to a digital signal. Were they right? The chance that something is wrong with the amplifier seems to be small. It is a standard op-amp. So I start with the most complex system. The two Arduinos and the two NRF24L01s. How can we do that? The signal input is pin A0. So we use rule number 3 and exchange the amplifier with a waveform generator. We, for sure, know that this one works and creates precise signals. Also, we can change the signals to do some testing. This is very important as we will see. According to rule number 5, I inject the most simple signal available a 1 kHz sine signal. And because the Arduino runs at 3.3 volts, I choose the signal between 0 and 3.3 volts. Next I connect my oscilloscope to pin number 9 or 10 of the second Arduino and we see what happens if the push to talk button is pressed. For the moment I do not connect my probe between pin 9 and pin 10. Why? because I would create a short circuit if I connect another probe to let's say the input signal. Here we have to pay attention. On pin 9 we see a PWM signal and its pulse width 
is proportional to the wave injected into A0 of the other Arduino. So this whole part seems to work. But Great Scott's diagram connects a headphone between pin 9 and pin 10. So let's check the signal on pin 10 and compare it to pin 9. Both waveforms are very similar but somehow inverted. But as many of his viewers wrote, we expect here the same looking sine wave as on the input. To get that we can try a simple trick. We connect a resistor and a capacitor to pin 9. And now we see what we expected. Of course the sine wave is slightly disturbed. But nevertheless it looks good. Cool. So we can assume that the most significant part of his design works. Perfect. Rule number 6 says only continue if the tested component works. So we can continue. But wait, the sine wave is quite flat on the upper side. It is quite evident that higher voltages are not transferred. Only if we reduce the input amplitude below 2.5 volts, the signal looks good. Now we can go on and connect a headphone directly to the digital signals on pin 9 and 10 and see if his viewers were right. We disconnect the resistor and the capacitor and connect the headphone directly to the pins. Exactly as Great Scott did. The sound is loud and clear. So the problem is not here and we can go on with the third part. The microphone amplifier. Let's again use rule number 3 and 5 and try the same trick. We keep the amplifier disconnected from the Arduino and connect a sine wave to its input. To check it out we connect a probe to the input and one to its output. The op amp is connected to ground and 3.3 volts and Great Scott selected an LM358 which should run on 3.3 volts. What would you expect as an output? Of course a sine wave with an amplitude of 3.3 volts. Because of the amplification factor of 100 defined by these two resistors we have to reduce the input voltage to 0.033 volts. And really we see a sign at the output. Unfortunately not what we expect. It is very flat at the top. Why? The LM358 used in this design is quite old and these parts cannot reach the full 3.3 volts at its output. As we see it only reaches around 0.7 volts less. In the early days op amps often were powered by plus minus 12 volts. Back then 0.7 volts were relatively small and therefore accepted. Today we can get so called rail to rail op amps their output much closer to VCC. Fortunately our Arduino also did not like voltages above 2.5 volts. So we only have a tiny problem to solve. We have to reduce the middle voltage to around 1.2 volts not 1.6 volt as it is now. We get this effect by changing this resistor. Now we have a good looking sine wave with 2.5 volts amplitude which should be acceptable for the Arduino. Let's try and connect the amplifier to the Arduino. Yes it works. In addition to the sign we hear some noise which comes from the digitalization and the transmission. But the signal is loud and clear. If we attach the microphone we hear a clear voice with a Swiss accent. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. As long as we do not shout. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. Great Scott's walkie talkie works now like a charm. He wanted his walkie talkies for his bike tours. Because we are both bikers maybe he finds one's time for a ride with me. Now I would at least be able to communicate with him. To enhance the design we could add a unique microphone amplifier which adjusts its amplification factor according to the sound level. Like that we can yell and it still works. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
one, two, three. And we could add one of my small amplifiers and connect it to a loudspeaker. And because we have a nice setup, we can experiment a little with digital transmission. And I can show you an interesting effect. If I increase the frequency of my signal, it gets weaker and finally disappears. This is what we expect because of this shitty little loudspeaker. But if I continue to increase the input frequency, suddenly we get the signal back. But its behavior is different. If I increase the input frequency, the tone at the output becomes lower. Strange behavior. At an input frequency of around 11 and 13 kHz, we again get the same 1 kHz signal. What happens here? Some extraterrestrial influence? Or a strong 5G signal, which not only fries my brains? No, it is much simpler. The effect is well known and it is called aliasing and comes from the digitalization shown by Great Scott in his video. If you are interested in this phenomenon, you can watch this video. In short, digitalization creates a folding effect around the sampling frequency. We sample with 24 kHz. So we should see a 1 kHz signal at 1 kHz, at 11, 13, 23 and 25 kHz. And really, we hear these signals loud and clear. This effect is significant for oscilloscopes with low sampling rates, or also in software-defined radios. And it shows the importance of high sampling rates, because with a high sampling speed, the aliasing starts at higher frequencies and is not a problem. Summarized, we were able to make Great Scott's walkie-talkie work. We applied some general rules for debugging, like the reduction of complexity and the change of components. No component was defective. By adjusting a resistor, we get less sound distortion. I used the default sampling and transfer rates. But you even can lower both if you only want to transport speech. So, before asking for help, always try at least these two rules yourself. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.